Hey guys, Mark here and today we're going to explore five different ways to remove unwanted objects from your pictures using Affinity Photo. Keep in mind, I post two tutorials like this per week, so you, if you are into Affinity software, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Alright, let's get started. As you can see, here I am inside Affinity Photo for desktop. But if you're using iPad version, the process will be quite similar. Let's start with the first way. This is the most popular way, in painting brush. So let me just select the layer with the picture itself over here. With this layer selected, I go to my tool panel on the left side of the screen and search for this group for reparation. This is healing brush tool at the very top. And inside this group, you will see in painting brush tool. Like any brush, we can adjust the size, opacity, flow and hardness here at the very top of the page. So we can modify the size of it to match your needs. Let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. You can zoom in with shortcut, you can zoom in with navigator as well. If you're on iPad, simply pinch to zoom. All right, and I'm going to paint over this element. I got this red mist covering area I paint over already. And now I'm going to release my mouse and this element is gone. That's how easy it is to use this tool. So this is your first tool that you should always try if you need to remove some elements from your picture in painting brush. Really powerful tool. Works best with simple background like this. In my case, sky. If you've got like background like sky, grass, water, you will have really good results with this tool. All right, let's try to remove something harder, maybe this area. And not bad. Cool. All right. Maybe something here. We got some white spot here. It's quite good, as you can see. In painting brush, this is our first method. Let's move to the second one. All right, this is actually about blur. So sometimes, even we really want, we cannot remove something. In this case, we got many people here, and just one person didn't sign the consent that we can use this image. So. With, with this person in the picture, we cannot use it. And if we cut this person out, it will look creepy. So what we can do is to blur out this one person. Let's try to do that. I will duplicate the whole photo. So right click on the layer, duplicate. And now I will apply the blur to the whole picture. So here is our blur menu. We can pick Gaussian blur. All right adjust the radius using the slider. Something like this will do. Now I can match this directly into a picture. So I got the original picture and then I got copy that I blur already. I blur everybody now, so that's not what we need. Let's draw a shape that we're going to use to cover someone's face. Ellipse will be good. So I just draw ellipse here in the center right now and right click on this layer with the shape and select mask to below. Take a look. Now our blur is kind of trapped inside this shape, but we can still move this shape around. So select the shape itself and you can move it around. You can adjust where is the sh where, where the blur will be. That's really cool. So let's say this lady in front, she didn't allow us to use image of her face. So we can adjust this shape. We can put this shape here in front of her and we are done. If you want this shape to be softer, you can blur the shape itself. Take a look. I click on the layer with shape, only the layer with shape. FX for layer styles, layer effects and blur the shape. So we got soft blur now. All right, so this is how way how you can blur someone's face in group photo like this. 
I think it's much better than trying to remove one person from the center. It's quite creepy. All right, method number three, patch tool. This tool is also hidden in the same area that in painting brush was. So here in the healing area, repair area, we got our patch tool. We can simply draw selection around the object. And then I move my mouse away, searching for the new texture for this area. Click once and then you need to click one more time to confirm this. And it's done. We can keep using this tool, make selection, drag out, click once, and then one more time to confirm and it's gone. So you can kind of manually search for new texture, new color to cover this area. Keep in mind you need to tap twice to confirm and then one more time to deselect. Really easy to use tool. And again, it's best if you got like easy to repeat backdrop like water in this case. So we can manually adjust everything as we need. All right, that was our method number three. Let's move to method number four. And this is about blemish removal tool that I mentioned briefly in our top tips for affinity photo. So some of you may know this method already. It's perfect if you want to remove some small little spots like this here on her face. Let's zoom in. This tool is also located in the same group, just below patch tool we used in the previous photo. We can change the size of this circle using this slider here. And take a look, I click on the area, I'm on the wrong layer, <laughs> let's go back to the photo, I click on the area and I drag it out. So I click and hold, click and drag out. I click and drag out to the direction of the correct, uh, correct texture, the texture I wanna reuse. So this is kind of like happy medium between patch tool and in painting brush tool. It's like patch tool and in painting brush tool got baby and we <laughs> end up with this one. So both we got brush, but this brush can replace texture and we can decide manually. We can drag it in the certain direction ourselves and decide which texture we're going to use in each area. So that's really handy because we got more control than with in painting brush, but it's a little bit easier to use than patch tool, especially on the smallest spots like this. All right, really nice tool, check it out. This was our method number four and just one more way that I know I use. Method number five, this is all about in painting fill. So this is exactly the same technique we used during the first example, but instead of using brush, we will fill the whole area, selected area. So first, Let's select a layer with the picture. Then we need some kind of selection. We can use freehand selection on rectangular selection. Let's go with the freehand this time. Be careful if you got your subject next to the water, you also need to select the reflection in the water like this. All right, I got my selection. I need to add some further to it, so I will make this a little bit softer. I go to select, further, maybe 15 pixels, apply. So this is just to make the selection a bit softer. And after that, I'm ready to try my in-painting fill. So I will go again here, edit, and I will click fill. In this pop-up menu, you need to select in painting over here. Click apply. And nothing happened. 
All right, it's go. It's working. It's working. It's filling this area. It may consume some resources of your computer, especially if you are <laughs> recording videos in 4K like me right now. Okay, so we got our area filled with new content. As you can see, it repeat this cloud here. So it will require you guys to actually use some of the tools I showed you before, maybe in painting brush now and try or maybe patch tool will be better here because we can kind of move this cloud away like this and kind of randomize this new texture here. So that's not perfect, but if you got big chunk that you want to remove and you don't want to spend hours using in painting brush, you can also use selection and then simply fill this whole area with in painting effect as well. All right. So five methods that we learn about today in painting fill, blemish removal tool, patch tool, blur, and of course the most popular one in painting brush itself all right guys thank you for learning with me today and i will see you in my next tutorial bye